now. Rishi Sunak's hopes of a Tory revival are failing as a new poll shows Labour has extended its lead in the polls. According to a survey at the weekend by Redfield and Wilton Strategy, Sir Keir Starmer's opposition has a 20-point lead. That's up from 19 a week ago. This will be a huge concern for the Tories who'd hoped for that uh, autumn statement tax cuts and increases to the nation to the national minimum wage would give them a bounce in the polls. The latest poll has also seen Reform UK close the gap to 10 points. But the question we're asking today, who do you trust on the economy, the Conservatives or Labour? Joining me now, Conservative MP, member of the Conservative Party of the new Conservatives is Miriam Cates. Miriam, good afternoon to you. Hey. Is it, how does it feel waking up in the morning and going, oh, God, I'm still a Conservative? Is it a, can you describe that <laughs> visceral <conservative>. feeling? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the polls The polls don't look great, do they? I think it's, uh, two things are important to say before we discuss why they are, how they are. It's firstly, we're not in an election campaign right now. A lot of people aren't thinking about how they're going to uh, put the cross in the ballot box when it comes to the election time. And I think that's reflected in there are a lot of don't knows. Um, and we don't know, we, we just don't know how, how those people will vote come the election. So I think that's really important. Um, I think also, and this is more anecdotal from knocking on doors in my patch, um, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of love for Labour. Um, Starmer doesn't seem particularly popular amongst people that I speak to. Uh, but clearly, people are disappointed with the government, and that's what's reflected in the polls. So it's more a disappointment, I think, with the Conservative Party, rather than a shift directly from voting Conservative to voting Labour. That's how it feels in my patch, anyway. So you're, you're part of the new Conservatives. Just for the uninitiated, what are new Conservatives, Miriam? So the New Conservatives is a group of MPs in Parliament that I co-chair with Danny Kruger, another MP who was elected in 2019, like me. Uh, and the idea of our group is that we represent uh, MPs, Conservative MPs, who've been voted in, who've been elected since 2016. And the reason we've chosen 2016 is because, of course, that was the year of the Brexit referendum. That's when it became really clear that people were fed up with the Westminster government, with uh, the Brussels government, uh, and wanted some change. They expressed an opinion that actually the consensus, the status quo in Westminster, in Brussels, wasn't good enough anymore. Now, we all know how long it took the wrangling over Brexit for us to finally leave uh, the European Union. But essentially, in that time, between 2016 and 2019, it became clear that there was a real realignment of voters in the UK, and this happened across the, uh, the Western world, where people had had enough and ordinary people wanted to have their say again. So we, the New Conservatives, represent those, those group of voters, or at least we try to, in Parliament. That doesn't mean we're not aligned with many other people in our parliamentary party we are it's just that we're specifically speaking for that uh, for that group when you look at those polls and they they've been pretty consistent miriam haven't they in in, in the last few months in showing this you know fairly convincing labor lead and even if it's not because people are hugely enamored with keir starmer it's just that he's not the government and maybe they're the chief recipients of, of that alone however is it about your... Do you think the leader needs to change? Could you change a leader before the next election? Because a lot of this falls on Rishi Sunak. He wasn't elected in the conventional way, wasn't even elected in the conventional way, internally speaking, some might say. So it, is that what it's going to take? Maybe a change of leader? Would you support that? No, I think that the polls really just have never recovered since that rather difficult time in July well, a year and a half ago now when we saw the downfall of Boris Johnson. And I think, of course, people had hopes that changing the leader, not once but twice, uh, would increase our rating in the poll. Well, and there, polls and there have been fluctuations since then, but essentially we have hovered around quite a low position. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. I mean, obviously, immigration is a huge part of that. It's still a number one concern for people who voted Conservative in 2019. And yet over the last two weeks, we've seen two very disappointing pieces of news. Firstly, that the government's uh, bid to get flights off to Rwanda failed in the Supreme Court. And secondly, last week, we saw the um, publication of the most recent net migration figures, which are huge, and three times the amount that they were in 2019 when we promised to bring them down. So people are rightly 
frustrated, angry, disenfranchised, that a key promise of the government in their manifesto has not been fulfilled. And then, of course, we, you know, we look at the economy, um, you know, th things are steadily improving, it seems, but it's not in a great place. We've got to be honest, we've had a terrible uh, inflation for the last uh, year, which has been bigger than any tax rise could have been. It's really affected the cost of living. Of course, people are not happy with that, understandably. Um, and then we've also got issues with health care and backlogs in healthcare and care workers and things like that. There are some different issues, difficult mm. issues uh, that we are facing. And it's unsurprising, given that the Conservative Party has at least nominally been in power for, for 13 years, that that is reflected in the polls. But I think taking a step back from it and trying to be more impartial, I mean, obviously, of course, I'm not impartial, I'm a Conservative MP, but trying to be a bit more objective, shall we say, I think there's also a perception that politicians in general are not talking about the serious issues. And we do have some very serious issues. Look at the sure. the um, protests that we're seeing uh, on the streets of London every week and the kind of things that, that, that are going on and what it says about our society. Look at the impact long term of, of those immigration figures. What are the structural causes of our economic problems? We're not we can't just fiddle around with the figures. We have some deep rooted structural problems like debt, Miriam. like not enough young people, yep. um, like we don't sell enough things to other countries. And I think it I, feels I, like I, politicians I, I just aren't talking and about you, the serious issues. You very you very honestly outlined, you know, that the, the problems and the shortcomings here. Is Rishi Sunak, then, the man to battle and win the election for the Conservatives? Well, I very much hope so, and I think we would well, love to Do you support him? Do you, do you want... Do you think, I do. I do you do believe Rishi him. Sunak support... can win it for your party, Miriam? Honest answer. Well, man I, to I, woman. I can't answer that question, but I think the question would be... Yeah, he's your could Prime anybody, Minister. He's the leader of your party. Win. It's not, what I'm saying is, I can't promise you that Rishi Sunak or any other Do you, do you think other he's the guy? Do you think to... Rishi Sunak? You look at Rishi, you see him every week, a couple of times a week, mooching around Parliament. Do you look at him and go, he's the guy that's going to win us the election next year? I think it's about the policies that we put forward and whether or not we're keeping our manifesto promises. We've but is changed that a yes or a no, Miriam? I, I hate interjecting, but, let, you know, we, we, we've well, spoken many times. You're an honest person. Is he the guy to win you the next election, yes or no? The honest answer to that is, I don't know. But I don't know if anybody could win the next election for us unless we go back to the promises of 2019 and fulfil them. That, I think, is the most important question in big, people's minds. Is that minds. a Bring Back Boris campaign beginning? No, no, it definitely is not a Bring Back Boris. My, my point is, there will be an argument amongst some people that oh dear, we're doing terribly in the polls, we need to change leader. Now, okay. you know, perhaps that's an argument, but we've done it twice already and it hasn't actually made any difference in yeah. the polls, which suggests to me that, of course, leadership's important, of course that person is important in setting direction, but well, actually the fundamental problem here is that we're not fulfilling our the, commitments the, the policy, uh, in our The manifesto. policies aren't being fulfilled, I get it. Listen, Miriam, we stopped there for time, no other reason. Thank you, it's always good to talk, Miriam Cates, Tory MP.